neighbors. We're going to start our Trumbull County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for July 12th, 2023. Our next public workshop will be Tuesday, July 18th at 10 a.m. back at the Commissioner's Hearing Room downtown. And our next regular meeting will be next Wednesday, July 19th at 10.30 a.m. also in the Commissioner's Hearing Room. I'd like to ask everyone to please stand and join us in our pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Okay, at this time I would like to bring up our Trumbull County Auditor, Martha Yoder, and she's going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this fair. We ask that you will bless it. Of course, everyone with safe, safety and good weather. Lord, we just ask also that as we make decisions today, as our fellow public officials make decisions, give them grace and give them wisdom. And we ask all these things in your name. Amen. <coughs> thank you, Auditor Yoder. Make a motion to move agenda number 17 to the front because we have an attorney who's getting paid by the hour. So quickly, quicker we get them in, the more savings for the county. He needs a mic, I'm sure. Hold on, real quick. Madam Clerk, can you start the roll, please? Um, Mr. Cantil Mesa. Here. Uh, Ms. Frenchko. Here. Mr. Malloy. Here. Here's your holders first. Yep, we got to read the motion. Thank you. One, one more second, sir. Right, I'm going to read that here in a second once we get this. Good. Good. Item number 17 will be public discussion with attorney Robert Berkey regarding procedural matters that will take place during the public hearing for the proposed annexation of 31.3801 acres from Howland and Vienna Townships to the City of Niles. The public hearing will take place on July 17, 2023 at 10 a.m. in the Commissioner's Hearing Room, 5th Floor, 160 High Street, Northwest, Warren, Ohio, 44481. Motion. Do you have a motion? Second. Second. Make a motion or second. I don't know where we're at on that. Make a motion. <laughs> Make that motion. I'll second that motion. Mr. Cantilamesa. Mesa. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I uh, emailed the commissioners an agenda. I'd like to just go uh, here's first of all. Here, sir. It's in your what room. reaction, if any, to any of these, do we, or do we want to go down each item and discuss it? Certainly, in the first one, that I concur that the chair would conduct the meeting. One of the questions that I have is, um, I assume you want me near the near the table where you will be sitting uh, in case questions come up, or do I need to be there at all? I, I would prefer, if possible, you would chair so I can yeah. de dedicate my time to hearing their arguments both ways and understanding that stuff rather than running the meeting, I would prefer to be able to have that time to, to hear both sides clearly and fairly. And that's satisfactory with me? I, I have different opinions with that. I asked him in the past and I haven't had an email response to any statutory authority that would give uh, the chairperson of the quasi judicial body when we're acting in that fashion to delegate that duty and I haven't received any memorandum of law or any any authority saying that that's permissible 
In addition to that, if you are the chairperson chairing a meeting and just allowing people to do them in a particular order, we already had our attorney prepare the agenda. All you would have to do is these few things, and we can save money by not having uh, an attorney there for possibly eight to 10 hours. I, I'm not aware of that there's any case law on that, but I think it's a matter of process or procedure before the commission. So well, this is certainly, uh, I defer to the commissioners if that's what they wish. Uh, the, the matter is just a matter of, of going through the script that we have, getting exactly. down to the testimony, having the attorneys or the interested or the necessary parties uh, present their cases, let the public have their word on it, and then commissioners will come in and, and well, they open the meeting and then close the meeting. That's all you would have to do is introduce the parties, outline the proceedings, call them up individually, and then you can dedicate take your time to taking notes and, and following it. It's, it's really, we've done the same thing with road vacations and with drainage district periods and certain capacity bracketed the judicial body and the chairman of the board. Or just Commissioner Kayden Lee, so do you have any thoughts on this? We, we have, in my eight years here, we have had uh, different public hearings where the attorney does run the meeting, so it's not uncustomary. We've had annexations. Prosecutor's office has never met, never weighed in on that. Uh, I'm going to defer to our legal counsel here. He's our attorney. Uh, if it's, if it's going to be, if it's permissible, it's fine. Uh, I think the more time that the commissioners have to sit and listen and take in as much information as they can is, is probably valuable. So, yeah. I get, you would I, have to I, have, I, I've been asking for a few days now for the staff for, for some type of authority that shows that that's permissible. Well, I've never seen that. Well, I cannot find that it's impermissible. Okay. And if it's a prior fraud a procedure, I a, defer to the board. It's a serious matter. If there's an effort to have an annexation from townships to the city of Niles, and I believe that we need to make sure that we do everything procedurally correct in case there comes a point where they could argue that we did follow proper procedure. My preference is to make sure that we're doing it absolutely correctly and that that doesn't open the door for them to use that as any type of argument to say that it wasn't procedurally correct. Uh, I prefer to have our board conduct the meeting because that's what the board commissioner does. Again, I defer to the board. We can address that. Monday morning when we uh, come forward to the hearing. Uh, and I'll look further for if, if, if there is a if there is any uh, case law that suggests that uh, in a public meeting such as this on an annexation matter that, that we can proceed with uh, someone else the board handling the meeting and not chairing the meeting. It doesn't mean that the chair is not chairing the meeting. It just means that, uh, that process is being administered by me. And I think with the with the necessity and how important this is legal wise, if we have our attorney representing us that is running the meeting, uh, I think he would be a little more astute with this to make sure that he follows from his 40 years of experience in doing this stuff, uh, proper procedure much better than we would regarding this. And I still defer, I think if he's a professional in this, He's representing us. They will have all their attorneys on both sides. Um, uh, I just think it's 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 professional courtesy also uh, with him to be able to run that meeting. Yeah, commissioner, I, I I say that when we're acting as a board of commissioners in a quasi-judicial fashion, it's a, it's different than running a meeting. It's very exact, and if you're not comfortable with it, I'd be happy to do it and save the county money. <laughs> I still say Attorney Berge. I, I would feel more comfortable. Commissioner Kane and Melissa. Yeah, I, de I defer to our president and to our attorney. There's no existing case law. Again, yeah, these are um, administrative decisions. It doesn't mean that the chair is not the chair of the board. It just means that he's delegating authority to run the process through our attorney. There's nothing that's going to change. Have you ever seen in a judicial proceeding that a judge does that? We are quasi judicial. Quasi judicial. That's what I'm saying. That's a public piece. Public piece. Uh, the second item on, on my agenda, on the agenda I submitted to you, was. Please control the. Yeah. So you're going to have to wait till public comments. Just to set. Should should we if we 
if it is decided, should there be a time limit set for when it's time for the general public to present uh, any testimony to the board, should there be a time limit set? Yes, that would be the same as we would in any other type of a meeting similar. And that is three minutes? Two minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Well, I think a little longer than two minutes regarding this. I mean, this is... There are some people with some real concerns. There will be some neighbors. There will be some people that I think two minutes is not enough time. I think it will be shortchanging them and shortchanging us on getting all the information in a two-minute thing. I, I would like to limit it to five minutes per comment myself. I, I prefer a little bit, a, a little bit less because there could be, you know, a pack. Okay. Pack and they're already getting, mind you, both sides are already going to have legal counsel there presenting their arguments. Again, I defer to the board as to setting a time limit. I think time limit well, is necessary. Those two then will agree on what's going to happen because they don't seem to agree with me. I had uh, submitted to the clerk a proposed agenda that I thought it was appropriate that the agenda be handed out to the gentleman. How, how about we split the difference and we go Great. four minutes? <laughs> Four minutes it is. Four minutes. There we go. Compromise. Four minutes it is. Okay. Thank you. What about, uh, I set an agenda and I have revised it a little bit. Um, I thought it, should, it was appropriate to, for a handout to the topic that comes in uh, to have a, an agenda so they see the process that's going to be followed. <laughs> Are there any questions about that? We're going to have to add the public comments the, in the time amount. In, in the agenda. Yeah. 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 Correct. Uh, and Paul and I, uh, the clerk and I, will finish that up. And, okay. Uh, I guess you can make copies and have it available yes, in the sir. morning. Uh, the, I, I would anticipate that there's going to be a large crowd. The question would come up whether or not the commission's hearing room is sufficient, has sufficient, uh, sufficient mm -hmm. space to handle, and we get to a overload situation means of interfering with the public's right to, to be part of the, the process. So this, is there any most opinion of the board on that? Not issue? necessarily. We've had tax rooms before. I know there, there was an issue with the annexation before I was a commissioner, but I went to the meeting and um, Commissioner Sample Mason was there. It, it was it was it was packed, but at the same time we've already noticed the meeting and so that would require us to reset that at a public meeting and then put it out there by Friday. I believe our conference room is adequate and we also have access to the public because we have Zoom and other avenues where someone can participate if they're not able to either physically. Uh, it, was it the board's intention to continue this on Zoom? To have this on Zoom? It would be any questions from the public, they can, they can log in to the board. Right, what happens if 300 people show up to, to the meeting or to the meeting. Meeting. To the meeting. I, I think we, we obviously need to uh, we need to check with our, our building code and make sure what we're following all the rules and regulations there obviously for any hazards or, or fire safety or anything like that and unfortunately there's going to have to be a limit uh, if that means uh, I mean it's more pleasure but if that means having another hearing if need be to accommodate other people or encouraging those people that are coming in that can't be accommodated to use Zoom in, the other, in another facility um, or on their phones. I mean, that's, that's probably the, the only option we have. I, I, know it's a, I know it's a hotly contested issue and I know it's going to be uh, well attended, but I don't foresee 300 people. I could be wrong. Um, Auditor Yoder, you can add some more to this. I was going to say that we shouldn't ever say that we're limiting because I can get a couple of questions. We may be, I need to check with um, the universe, but we may be able to do a little bit of overflow in the um, conference room that we have um, and zoom it there. Um, but let me check with him. I, I'm here all day and of course, you know, our connectivity is not the greatest. So I will meet with him tomorrow and I will let the commissioners know. All right? Great idea. That's a good solution. Thank you. I'm happy that there is alternative planning going on, so that needs to be 
anticipated. Uh, the next one is the, 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 uh, I've, the attorneys, and I've been invited by the necessary parties and attorneys to participate in a number of conversations. And we're having our last conversation this Friday. So uh, the question comes up, will come up if we not, and there is a large crowd, and we're not able, we're not able to finish the meeting on the 17th. Have you thought about a new date, an adjournment date to, uh, to continue the hearing? Well, be the next I think that's going to be the intention on the attorneys for the plaintiffs, the counsel, and yourself. Your schedules, uh, I'm sure, are, are pretty muddied up, and this is something that we're going to have to accommodate uh, everybody. So I don't know at this time we can just state that without having them involved in the conversations. What would happen is Monday, while we're in the hearing, if we don't get through it, we would decide there. Monday is right. With all the parties involved. Well, yeah, with all the parties involved. Okay. The, the problem or the, the circumstance that may come up is that, let's see, the order the order is the petitioners go first, and then city and house, and then uh, uh, the townships. And we hope that they want to try to get through their presentation. So one doesn't have uh, two weeks to think about cross-examining the other. The, the side is already presented Correct. the testimony. Well, those so are the we're hoping that we were, the hope is that we can get the necessary party's testimony done. And there might be, you know, I, I'm going to say six to ten witnesses that might be available, that might be presented for the uh, uh, by the necessary parties. Well, the, fortunately, the two townships are represented by the same council. So that should be a bit more expeditious. And uh, I would say that it would likely be at the end of that week. I don't know that we have anything next Thursday or Friday, but tentatively, I would imagine that we could do it maybe Friday. Well, subject to the so, availability yeah. of counseling and things like that, yeah. Uh, there are people, I'm trying to, I've tried to get witness lists out of the uh, parties. I've had a generality that will be administrative people from the townships, administrative people from the city. Uh, I, that's what I expect to see, and then the general public's testimony. Uh, the court reporter has been ordered. Uh, that court reporter will be available for the balance of the day, and, and will also <coughs> be available for any continuance. So, when, when, uh, did, I want to make sure that the board did this properly. There is a, was it generalized to hire? No, by statute, by statute, either, either party can request, a, any of the necessary parties can request a, a court reporter, and once the request is made, you have to Under, Understandably so, but it, it, the board of commissioners still have to authorize the, the contractor services, then we should probably have that in motion or as a generalized agenda item today prior to next week. If that's the case, I think it's just Nagy Baker out of Youngstown is the court reporting service that I thought to NAGY Nagy Baker. Did you know the hourly rate? Uh, I'd have to dig through here. The hourly rate is uh, $175 for the first two hours and $80 an hour after that. Okay. I, I believe that that's correct. Okay. But okay. I, if you confirm it, I'll make a motion right now. So we have it. I don't know that I can confirm it. I didn't bring the entire time. So I do not have, I was going to say in the paperwork I brought, I do not have that. I can return to the office and it's okay. It. Call out here to confirm. But I believe it's $80 an hour, so, $175 for the first two hours, and $80 an hour after that. I'd like to make a motion from the floor to hire Nathan Baker for court reporting for the annexation hearing at the rate of 
175 for the first two hours and $80 thereafter, subject to confirmation by, subject to confirmation by Attorney Berkey. Yeah, 175 for the first two hours, $80 more after that. Need a second. I, I guess in, in my eight years here, we never um, voted on a court order. That's part of the statute, that's part of the process. Uh, that's all right. That's not an action of the board necessarily that has to happen. Even in meetings that you've attended, in the annexation meetings that you've attended, we've never voted on the court reporter there. So uh, I'm not sure that that's even a necessary thing. I will second it. I will second it. That's fine, but um, I don't know if it's at all necessary. I believe you have to have that for them to present their invoice and be paid by the county. There needs to be something authorizing that. Yeah, that's not true. But, Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Mr. Cancela Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. I submitted to you sections of the statute that uh, deal with the, the responsibilities of the board as it uh, comes down to the decision making time. Uh, after we hear the evidence, if there's uh, any uh, legal questions that need to be answered, as you
who spent countless hours mentoring, educating, listening, and guiding these fine young adults. These volunteers teach their individual 4-H members how to run their own meetings, elect officers, vote on all issues pertaining to their club, organize fundraisers, and how to balance the club's checking account. And whereas, the Board of Trouble County Commissioners commends our 4-H participants for their time and dedication towards these projects and their participation in 25 traditional clubs. This year's 4-H slogan is paint a bright future with 4-H. And whereas the Board of Trouble County Commissioners also wishes to say a special thank you to all the staff and volunteers who work so diligently, giving guidance and support to these youths. Therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trouble County Commissioners urges all citizens of Trouble County to support the efforts of these young people who are the future of Trouble County. Our children are one of the greatest assets and should be commended for the success and accomplishments through the 4-H program. Okay, at this time I'd like to bring up Ashley Meredith, 4-H educator, if you want to bring your kids up. Program that we have. 
to learn more about Ohio 4-H and Travel 4-H members and the project distribution in our county. 4-H successes lie in the hands of dedicated volunteers and program partnerships. We are thankful for the talented group of adults, the support of our commissioners, and other organizations that keep pushing us forward. By supporting the 4-H way, you are allowing 4-H members ages 5 to 18, the opportunity to learn more about lending a hand in their communities, strengthening networking capabilities, developing leadership skills, increasing responsibility, teaching sportsmanship, and much, much more. I have 14 4-H members with me today who are very passionate about 4-H. I hope that you may get to see a glimpse of the impact 4-H has made in their lives and how 4-H has inspired them. They would like to introduce themselves, so I'm going to call them up to stand in front of the stage. We're going to go down the line. Everyone is going to introduce themselves with their first and last name, their age, and their current 4-H club.
We would now like to present a small gift to the commissioners and staff in appreciation. If we could have those members please come up. Man, I bought you a duck last year. Thank you. Good to see you, buddy. Good Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we would like to invite some of our 4-H members up on stage to share a short speech with you this morning. And so first, I am going to call up William Bailey. <laughs>
for the motto, to make the best better, that has stuck with me from one of my first years. Courage has always pushed me to learn more, try harder, and to persevere. As I go into my second year of college, I know that I carry the values I learned in 4-H, and for that I am very grateful to this organization. Thank you. Thank you, Georgia. Next, we'll have Hunter Miller.
I am 11 years old and will be going into the sixth grade of a brand middle school. This will be the third year I have been in 4-H. I have been in the Calgary Us Club for three years, showing dairy cows. This year I joined the Happy Hand Hog Club and will be showing a market model. 4-H has been a great experience for me. Being in the dairy club, I have learned so much. It's been fun for me because my dad showed dairy cows when he was a kid. I got to learn a lot from him. This year, we have spent a lot of time as a family learning about hogs together. No one in my family has ever shown, showed a mark hog. These experiences have helped me grow in my knowledge and love for animals. I love being in the farm this same now. Thank you, commissioners, for your support for the 4-H program. It has impacted my life and others great. Thank you, Lucas. Next, we'll have Abigail Potter. Hey, why don't we show pigs? 
From pigs, I went to steers. And throughout my 4-H career, I've met some of my best friends, mentors, and made my best memories. Every year leading up to fair, and the fair week have brought so many memories, including playing kickball in horse arena, pushing a car through a parade, barn sleepovers, and showing along some of my best friends. 4-H has taught me so many lessons, including responsibility, how to talk to adults as young kids, how to respect others, how to lend a helping hand, and how to be a leader, and, eat, and more. If I did not have the opportunity to participate in 4-H, I would not be the person I am today. Thank you to 4-H for creating many opportunities for me to explore. Thank you, County Commissioners and Ashley, for your value. Thank you, Addison. In conclusion, thank you, Commissioner Molloy, Commissioner Frenchko, Commissioner Campbell Mesa, and staff for your continued support of our program. We will continue to encompass the 4 H motto to make the best better in Trouble County. Thank you. Thank you. 
they look pretty damn good. Man.
Someone took the commissioner's key last night they couldn't find, so I had to sign this key out and they made me sign it out my name. Okay. Is there a back? Motion or restart or anything? Uh, second. Uh, what was that motion? Motion to reconvene. Second. Ms. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. And Mr. Cancela Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Start with item number one. It's working. Just hold it close to your mouth. To dispense with reading the minutes of the regular meeting dated July 6th, 2023, and accept and approve the video recording of the July 6th, 2023 Commissioner's regular meeting as the official meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Sir. Mr. Cantilla Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Uh, because we didn't receive them until this morning, and I didn't get a chance to read them. No. Item number two, to approve the bills. Motion to approve. Sorry. Mr. Cantilla Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item number three, to approve additional appropriations. Motion to approve. Sorry. Mr. Cantilla Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Because when I received my agenda, all of those items were missing, and I believe we should review them before we vote on them. No. Item number four to transfer appropriations. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cancel Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Because the board hasn't approved, or I'm sorry, hasn't reviewed any of them, and I haven't either. I have number five to receive the amended certificate of the county budget commission number 12 2023. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantilla Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. For the same reasons, no. Item number six to approve a school resource officer agreement by and between the Trumbull County Commissioners, Trumbull County Sheriff Paul S. Monroe and the Champion Local School District Board of Education for police protection services for the Champion Local School District, its buildings and activities, personnel, students, 
and public on site for the 2023-2024 academic fiscal school year, July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024, the Champion Local School District agrees to pay the Trumbull County Sheriff's Office $63,578.58. Motion to approve. Second that. I just have a board review. Wait, I'm sorry. Before you go into anything, you keep saying the board, what the board did and what the board did do. With all due respect, Commissioner, you have no idea what the other board members have done or have happened. So just speak for yourself. Okay. So last week in the meeting, there was not going to be any work session because of the fair and this. As far as I understand, the board hasn't had that meeting. We have not, but I did my research on my own. I spoke with the sheriff yeah. myself this morning. Okay. Did any? I personally have not received anything that verified uh, that all actual and soft costs are covered by the contract amount. Did you ask for it? It should be submitted to the commissioners upon approving a, a contract, especially given the fact that the current sheriff is consistently over budget. Because if not, then in essence, everyone in Trumbull County is subsidizing the cost. The legacy costs are, are covered, the uh, workers' comp uh, is all taken into account, the hospitalization is taken into account. There is no wear and tear on the vehicle, so that's null and void. You can't charge it for something that's not happening. Um, so yeah, everything is taken into account into this price. There, there's been nothing submitted to the board of commissioners aside from the actual so contract. They discussed that at a workshop with us. What workshop? The workshop that we had two weeks ago. That all these contracts, all these school resource officers, are the soft costs are rolled into. Them. So they told you that. Correct. Okay. Yeah, Bill. Uh, if you think the money board is applying to us, then uh, I don't know what to tell you. That'd be going the way but gave us a rundown of what they did with the Bristol and the schools and how that works. And I I know this applies to the same thing with champions. They're all written the same. I, I prefer to see a report that okay. shows what the costs, what the actual costs are, the soft costs, and to ensure that those are covered, especially given the financial situation of the sheriff. So it, I just want to know. Mr. Cantola Mesa? Yeah. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Fresco? Because nothing was submitted to prove that all the costs were covered? No. Item number seven, to approve school resource officer agreement by and between the Trumbull County Commissioners, Trumbull County Sheriff Paul S. Monroe, and the Newton Falls School District Board of Education for police protection and services for the Newton Falls Local School District, its buildings and activities, personnel, students, and public on site for the 2023-2024 academic fiscal school year, July 1st, 2023, through June 30, 2024, the Newton Falls Local School District agrees to pay the Trumbull County Sheriff's Office $63,578.15. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantola Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. French Co? Because there's no proof that the hard and soft costs are covered in the contract amount and nothing was provided to the Board of Commissioners. Again, Mr. Frenchville, please don't speak for the Board of Commissioners. Please do not speak for the Board of Commissioners. Let her finish first. It's, it's not discussion. Uh, when you're voting, you have the ability to assert your reasons for your no-vote about what's going on. The discussion is already passed with us for a second. So, back to what I was saying. Yeah, but you're, you're turning your vote on a yes or no, then. Mm -hmm. If you want to discuss it, you're, you're, you're voting for the third discussion. I am permitted to assert the reasons. The Board... You are not permitted to lie about the rest of the Board. The board Commissioners was not provided any documentation that shows that the, all the costs are covered by the contract, and that's the reason for my no vote. I'm not going to take the safety of our children and schools to be up for debate and utilize that as a way to take a cheap shot at the Sheriff's Department. Thank you. If the Sheriff's Department wants to double the cost on this, whatever they're going to do or lower it in half, the safety of our kids is too important to that. This is not this is the not sword to die on here when you're talking about safety of kids in school. It's not about safety, it's making sure that the cost It's not about safety. No, it's, it's about school resource losses that you're holding up because you have you failed to ask him for the soft cost and the hard cost. Just send an email, ask him for that. He will reply. 
or come to the workshop meeting. That's all. It's not about a discussion. I want to be able, we're, we're elected to be able to review things and to make sure that our costs are covered and not to just rubber stamp everything that's put in front of us. I believe that we should be reviewing things and they should be providing us with those, that, with that information to demonstrate that the costs are covered. You just went ahead and said that the no, we had discussions with, they're covered. We had discussions with the chief and the major. Okay. Which you didn't have, which I urge you to have. It, just because someone tells you something, I'd be doing the public in the service just to say yes because someone told me that. I want to look at that and there's nothing that I've provided with the contract. We should be taking our jobs a bit more seriously rather than just rubber stamping what's put in front of us. You can I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be approving this, but we do need to make sure that the costs are covered. You can figure the cost of an officer and roll in the PDR's pickup, roll in the workers' comp, and roll in the hospitalization and see for yourself if these numbers are correct. Because that's what they did. Okay. Do not think that I find Give it to us. No. The next item, Madam Clerk. Item number eight, to reappoint the individuals listed as members of the Trumbull County Local Corrections Planning Board for three-year term commencing July 30, 2023 and ending July 29, 2026. They are uh, the Honorable Philip Vigorito and the Honorable Jeffrey D. Adler. And uh, I do have an error here about Keith Evans, uh, the request by, and I believe that's uh, Miss Tracy, so I do need to change that. I apologize for that error. Motion to approve. Sorry. With the correction that mentioned by the clerk. Sorry, Mr. Cantilamesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. French Co. Yes. Item number nine to approve change order number two final with Codwell Tanks Incorporated. This is for contract A for the Mineral Ridge Hydraulics Improvement Project known as County Project 2W15 located in the Mineral Ridge Public Water System, Weathersfield Township, in a reduction of $20,000. This revises the total contract amount to $2,040,458.65. This is as a, sorry, a result uh, of the electric electrical company charges allowance a bid item not being utilized. Motion to approve. Sorry. Mr. Cantola Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. French Co. Yes. Okay. Oops, there going away. Okay. Item number 10, to receive and place on file the monthly activities report for the Trumbull County Dog Kennel for the month of June 2023. Motion to approve. Uh, this is a new one I sent, ma'am, because uh, Sanitary took a transfer off, and I sent you all a new one. Um, we did. But that was at the end, I believe. We provided you a new one this morning. I just, over yes, there. But I'm reviewing it. It's right there. I'm just saying, I have my notes on the ones that I did my okay. Okay. review. Okay. 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 Um, motion on the floor. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchco. Yes. Item number 11, to approve the promotion of Mr. Larry Infant as fiscal specialist, a non-bargaining employee with the Trumbull County Department of Job and Family Services. This is effective July 31st, 2023. Mr. Infant will be paid $24.61 per hour with full county benefits. He'll be required to serve a nine-month probationary period. Motion to approve. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Cantalamesa. Yeah. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Uh, because the individual selected uh, only ranked higher because he scored higher in the subjective categories and other candidates had more experience and quite the education and there was no... Uh, there's no backup information relative to the testing, interview, and one of the categories was actually presentation. So th there was also no hiring committee, and it appears as if someone was taken up based on subjective standards and, instead of someone who had higher education and other um, experience. I have to vote no 
know and also request that the county look at making sure that their hiring processes um, are improved and that they give us the information we need to to make the decision relative to the hiring because it was missing my packet was missing anything except for the score sheet so it doesn't say anything about the presentation interview or the testing no item number 12 uh, to grant the special annual supplier fleet permits Hemley Tool Supply Incorporated and Diamond Well Services LLC. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalisa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchco. Yes. Item number 13 to grant the right of way permit. This is with Dominion East Ohio. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchco. Yes. Item number 14, to concur with the Trumbull County Engineer's Department and authorize the clerk of the Board of Trumbull County Commissioners to advertise for letters of interest for engineering services for the TRU on South Main Street, Warren City Number 1, Bridge. Motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantal Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchco. Yes. Item number 15, to concur with the Trumbull County Planning Commission and authorize the following, to select GPD Group, and that is the most qualified engineering firm to perform the necessary professional engineering services required for the completion of the PY 2022 CDBG Critical Infrastructure Grant, uh, Townsend Avenue Storm Drainage Improvements Project in Liberty Township, and authorize staff of the Trumbull County Planning Commission to begin scoping and price proposal negotiation process with GPD Group to be carried out in coordination with Liberty Township and the Trouble County Engineer's Office. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, Mr. Cantalamesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchco. Uh, because the selection, there is a selection committee and they, they work from the same department they actually justify the selection by giving a critical evaluation that was evident based on their notes and their scoring. Yes. Item number 16. This is to authorize the sub agreement between the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, the Trumbull County Board of Commissioners, the Trumbull County Workforce Development Board, and the Trumbull County Department of Job and Family Services for the period of July 1st. 2023 to June 30th, 2025, this agreement establishes terms, conditions, and requirements governing the administration and use of allocated funds for workforce development activities in the local area from the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchco. Yes, and they did a great job providing detailed information for you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our regular agenda for today. And I'd like to make a comment here also on behalf of the board and myself. Uh, first off, I'd like to commend the fair board uh, for the way the grounds look this week. I know you guys worked awful hard. I've never seen the fair look as in good a shape as it is right now uh, between the flowers, between the work that was done in the parking lots, between the, the new roofs that we have already, uh, the grandstand with the advertising you have there. Uh, everything looks fantastic. Um, I'd also like to thank the board and the previous board before me. Uh, we've appropriated $1.2 million from ARPA money to be spent out here at the fairgrounds. Much of that has already started. Much more of that is to come between the new 4-H building and the roofs on the horse barns. And I'd like to challenge our board also in the future that we make sure that we as the board of commissioners keep the fairgrounds at the forefront of our duties and what we do. I'd like to see this become more of a year-round 365 facility. We need some work on the grandstand so that we can enhance the electricity and the safety of the grandstand. And I would also like... As a vision of mine, I would like to see some form of a bigger community center gathering hall here, much like what they have in Canfield, Portage County, 
Wayne County and Holmes County over the past five years. They've all got new ag buildings that uh, they're able to rent year round for weddings, gatherings, functions, conventions. And I'd like to have us work towards that someday here with the facilities here. Also, we need some upgrades on sewer and water, which we're working with our sanitary engineers department to make that happen. And uh, I just want to commend everybody that's involved in the process. Thank you again for working with us. And I want the people, especially the 4 H kids and the people who come to the fair their whole lives to know that we do care and we are going to spend uh, a, a considerable portion of our time and money making sure that this becomes the crown jewel of Trumbull County. These improvements that are that have been happening, um, I'm glad they're happening. And, and since I started, that was something that I was making a priority: is to make sure that our fair or the grounds were taken care of. My first meeting as a commissioner, I was taken back by very I can't remember who all went back in the Victoria building, and it was horrific. And that, that was one of the first things that I worked on, making sure that it came through. And I'm thankful that the board that I work with did work with us to improve, improve that. And then just recently, I found out that the county is loaded. And, and by the way, I have a, a background in, um, as a hunt consultant and doing, this, doing inspections. I found that we have federal Pacific G-rated fire hazards electric service panels throughout Trumbull County when they were fixing the Board of Elections building and had an inventory. I'm glad that they found that they were here in the horse barns where the kids were and those just got uh, corrected so that, that that's a major safety issue and I'm, I'm really thankful that we're moving forward with making this a, a safer place for people who come to enjoy the fair and for the kids who are over in those barns. So. And I want to, whoever's here who has not been to the shows, please go see the shows. They just work so hard all year on preparing their projects. There's a special, um, you can pick it up at the fair office. Uh, I know there's a cheese show today. You can go and see the, the animals that you could be sitting on uh, and, and come back Saturday to help support the kids. You can, you can buy animals. You can Donate to them by putting a, an amount on the on the club, and then they'll extend that and divide it so that every child who has a project will get a little bit more. So that's that, that's another way to help support the party. I, I I just like to echo those sentiments and to say, um, you know, none of this happens without volunteers. The volunteers, whether they be the fair board members. Uh, whether they're, they're so giving of their time, and, and, and we've had a lot of two past presidents here recently, uh, and, and they're very well remembered. I remember them well. Um, but the volunteers, not only not only with the fair board members, but the 4-H volunteers, the parents that give of their time, the contractors that give of their time, you know, a lot of this stuff is donated by different contractors. None of this happens without them. I mean, we, We've been able to infuse some federal and state dollars into, into the fairgrounds, and it's really helped. But we sit up here as commissioners, and we take all this credit. But the people that are on the ground, the boots on the ground, are the volunteers, the people that are making everything happen. So, uh, and all those people come through the turnstile. So, I just want to say thank you. Uh, this is this is the best I've seen the fair look in my eight years here. Uh, we've made substantial improvements, and we're going to continue to make substantial improvements with new roofs and electric upgrades. Um, so I just want to say a special thank you to Barry Brown and, and the Fair Board and to all the 4-H volunteers and the kids and the parents. Uh, thank you for making this fair uh, what it is and showcasing uh, our, our number one our number one attribute here in Trumbull County, which is lost, is agriculture. You know, it's, it's showcasing and celebrating that. So please come out to the fair, tell your friends and family, and let's have a great 177th fair. Thank you. We, we do have a booth inside of the grandstand. The commissioners have a booth. I believe also Children's Services has one. Our uh, county recorder, our county engineer, our sheriff's department. Um, we have a lot of information in there from the auditor's office uh, regarding homestead exemption. Uh, we have some senior services things. So if you uh, have a senior in your family, make sure you pick up some of the brochures. 
Um, yesterday in our booth, we had 229 unique visitors attended our booth yesterday, and we look to increase that throughout the week to be able to serve thousands of people uh, here at the fair. We hope you're one of them. Spread the word to your family members. Now, I know yesterday, senior services received phone calls that were generated that started here in the booth and ended up um, calling their office later in the day uh, to sign up for some programs. So come and see us. Uh, the three of us will be here most of the week. And a lot of our department heads are out there. Thank you so much to all of our staff and all of our department heads that are uh, supporting us and all the uh, you know, all the public that we have out there. Thank you again for that. Also, one of the things that a lot of people are thinking that the commissioner did, but we did, <laughs> was the, uh, the, the services. That was all done by our engineer. I would make sure that he gets the, the proper acknowledgement for that. Yesterday there was some, some holes out there and someone fell and I got a hold of him and he by the, within 20 minutes he had his staff out there filling them because someone had fallen. So that's, that's just a testament to how all of our officials feel about the fair and supporting what's going on out here and making it a safe, a good experience. Okay, with that, are there any comments for the Good Trouble County from the public? Anybody want to come up and ask a question of us or make a statement or have anything for the Good of Trouble County? Okay, seeing that, um, once again, enjoy the fair. We've got quite a few days left. See the sights. Spend your money. Tell your friends and family to come on up and invite them this weekend. Bring the kids out. Support 4-H in their auction, and I look forward to seeing you next week and throughout the year. Uh, thank you again on behalf of the Board of Commissioners for inviting us to be a guest here tonight, hosting us, Fair Board, and uh, that's all I got. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second that motion. Mr. Cantola Mesa? Yeah. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchco? Yes. Thank you all. Well, that's you. Well, that's it. That's me, that's